Imagine walking into a stadium filled with 100,000 people, and millions more are watching on TV. You can hear cheers and screams coming from every direction, and flags from hundreds of countries were flying in the air. The excitement and the energy all around is so real, you can literally feel it. This was the opening ceremony of the 2012 London Olympic Games, and I was the best US track and field athlete in the triple jump. I had been working my entire life to get to this moment. Being part of something so much bigger than myself, it gave me chills. We all have that thing in life that we're working towards and want to become the best at. It could be to be the best mom or the best entrepreneur, each in our corner of the world. It's something we can all relate to, wanting to be the best at something. My hope is that hearing my story of working towards my dream while believing the best is yet to come can inspire you to believe the same. The day after I learned to walk, my parents were flipping me through cartwheels and encouraging me. They saw that I wanted to be the best. They saw a spark of passion, and they fed it. One summer day, in the early morning hours, they picked me up out of bed and loaded me in the car. When I cracked open my eyes, stepped out of the car, I saw they had brought me to a Junior Olympic track meet. I was tired, and I was stiff from the drive, Initially, I wasn't very happy to be there. And thankfully, I was too young and too stupid to know the importance of warming up well. So I stepped right onto the track. I shook off my bad attitude. I competed, and I did really well. My parents pushed me the most on days like these that I didn't want to be pushed. They knew I wanted to be great, and they taught me if I worked hard, the idea that the best is yet to come would become true. My effort paid off. I earned a scholarship to North Dakota State University, where my focus was track and field. I didn't do college like a normal kid does. I skipped the parties. I think I went tailgating once. Even academics sometimes took a backseat to my main focus of track and field. I wanted to be the best. My final year of college, I qualified for my first US Olympic trials. Competing with the top professional athletes in the entire US was thrilling. I was starstruck. I remember my stomach being in a ball of nerves, thinking I was gonna step onto the track at the wrong time, be in someone else's way, and get yelled at by someone who was important. But through the nerves, I mustered out some jumps, and they were subpar. But I was really proud that I had earned a spot to compete in those Olympic trials. I saw that I could compete with the best athletes in the US. But if I ever had hopes of becoming an Olympian, I needed to be better. I thought, wait, could I become an Olympian? After college, I continued to work towards this new idea of becoming an Olympian. And while I did, there were so many days that I had the urge to get sidetracked, go out with friends, stay out late, eat some junk food, have some beer, but I didn't. We all make sacrifices in life for things that we prioritize. I stuck to a diet where the drink of choice was a high protein shake every single day instead of soda or beer. And that was my daily treat, being able to have some fake chocolate. How lame is that? I stuck to a diet and it was strict and it was monotonous and it was painfully healthy and it was worth it. I could ask all the time how I could have the willpower to stick to the lifestyle I was living, keeping a 9.30 p.m. bedtime, like any mom would do in anticipation of being up all hours of the night with kids. Well, I did it to ensure I would have nine full hours of rest. I was the person who wouldn't ever miss a training day, even on vacation. And this often meant that I had to be the crazy lady doing sprints on the beach or push-ups next to the pool. And you should have seen the awesome stares that I got by other people on vacation. Well, this was my normal. To everyone looking in, it looked difficult. I saw a commitment to wanting to become better. I wanted to be an Olympian. I worked hard. Training sessions that lasted four hours a day, muscles so sore, I would feel like I was on fire. And then there was that sand 
from the jumping pit. Imagine that in every body crevice imaginable. So there's that. It was all worth it. In 2008, I qualified for my second Olympic trials. And now, no longer afraid I was going to be in someone else's way, I was on a mission. Top three make the Olympic team. Going into my final attempt, I was tied for fourth place. I looked down the runway, I jumped, landed in the sand, got out of the pit, and my eyes glued to the board that flashes the result. I waited a lifetime for that result to pop up. And it flashed, and it wasn't enough. One stinking place away from making the team. Missing out that year left me gutted. I needed time to reflect. So I escaped to our family cabin. And that night, sitting around the bonfire, my dad, from his lawn chair, reached over and passed me his Olympic trials credential. In the place where 2008 was written, he wiped it away and wrote 2012. Since that first cartwheel, he never stopped believing in me, even when I didn't believe in myself. He knew I could do it. He knew I could become better. And if I committed myself to the 2012 Olympic trials, something great would happen. I went home considering the idea, honestly overwhelmed at that thought. I hung the credential in my closet and I shut the door. And after a week, I was itching to start training again. That Olympic spark wouldn't go away. I needed to see if the best was yet to come. I continued to train while some big events outside of track and field happened. I married the love of my life, Greg, who conveniently doubled as a live-in training partner and massage therapist, so that was nice. And keeping with tradition, at our wedding, my dad walked me down the aisle. And he had previously been diagnosed with cancer, and four months later, it took his life. These are the most painful memories. I remember sitting at home with him on our living room couch. I held his hand, and I clung to the sound of every breath that I heard him take, because I knew his time on this earth was quickly coming to an end. Through this experience, I turned to my faith. And I'm a believer in the afterlife in the biggest way possible. Once again, I saw the best is yet to come. It became important to me to see my dad's dreams and my dreams come true. I needed to see his 2012 credential get used. So back on the track. I qualified for my third US Olympic trials. In 2012, my time had come. You know that feeling when everything just goes right and falls into place? This was one of those days. There are six rounds of jumps. I took the lead in the second round of the competition. I held it all the way through the end. Landing in the sand, I became an Olympian. I was so proud. And I wish you could have seen how I puffed my chest out with pride when I put on my dad's credential. I loved every second of the London Olympic Games. But there was this one thing festering in my mind. I didn't have a lifetime best performance that day. I wondered if I could be better. What if the best was still yet to come? I wanted more. I thought I could become the first female American triple jumper to qualify for two Olympic Games. I dedicated another four years to daily training, strict diets, bedtimes, sand everywhere, spending months away from home to train at the Olympic Training Center, and even putting off starting a family. Greg has always been supportive of me, but I feel really guilty about this, even now. But I continue to believe I could become better. Between 2012 and 2016, I progressed. I was feeling really good about hitting my goal. And this feeling, it lasted up until seven weeks before my final Olympic trials. During an intense training session, I felt a pop in my leg. Landing in the sand, I knew I tore my hamstring. The pain in my spirit was so real, it felt like a knife straight into my heart. It was like a nightmare. There was no way I could prepare for these Olympic trials with a torn hamstring. I was devastated. I spent that evening in tears. All I could think about was these Olympic trials being the culmination of my entire athletic career, and now suddenly none of the sacrifices seemed worth it. Everything I had been working for was wasted. The following weeks, 
I was forced to rest. And as many of us do, when life happens, as I did with the death of my dad, I turned to my faith. I spent a lot of time in prayer, and I began to see I had to surrender my Olympic goal. I had to trust in a bigger plan. It was the only way to move forward. So I made a new goal. It was to be present and enjoy this journey. Even with a torn hamstring, I decided it was still possible the best was yet to come. I celebrated every step of the healing hamstring and discovered I might have the world's slowest healing hamstring. It tested my patience. But finally, two weeks before the Olympic trials, I put on my spikes and I sprinted without any pain. I can't even tell you how excited I was about this. It was a breath of new life. It meant I could compete at the Olympic trials. And on competition day, not only did I compete, but I did it with a hugely grateful heart. There are two days of competition at the trials. I jumped well on the first day, and I earned a spot to compete on day two. And on that second day, I jumped my heart out. I fought to jump well, but it wasn't enough. I wore my sandy shoes for the last time that day, and still, I left the runway with more joy than should have been possible after failing miserably at my original goal. Believing the best was yet to come put my mind and my heart in a really good spot. That night, I celebrated with friends and family. We enjoyed some beer and some greasy and fatty and delicious nachos. As far as I was concerned, this experience was the best. I believed the best was yet to come, and it did. And this is my corner of the world, and each of us has something different that we're working towards. Yet we all have the same story, pushing ourselves to become better than before, and we should do it holding on to the idea that the best is yet to come. Whatever you're working towards, optimism is the way to get there. I've learned this over and over again in the experiences that I've had in athletics. And now I'm leaving the Olympic chapter behind. I found a new career that I love, and I can't wait to be a mom, if that's what's in store for Greg and me. Whatever it is, for all of us, I know the best is yet to come.